welcome back to another episode of Handloader TV. In this episode, we're continuing our series with Mike Venturino here, the author of Shooting World War II Small Arms. And this is the M3 grease gun we have before us today. That is correct. It's M3, U.S. model M3 submachine gun, commonly called the grease gun by the soldiers back in that day because it looked like the same thing you would grease your car with. You know, the same tool. <laughs> this is the M3. The, the reason it's the M3, first you have to flip up the cover and then you cock the bolt with this lever. Well, initial combat with it showed that this lever is fragile. It'll break. Uh -huh. So the M3A1 had just a hole in the bolt that you put your finger in to cock it. <laughs> That is interesting. Better, better not get your first finger cut off or you couldn't load the gun. <laughs> uh, and they did that because the bolt there, or the charging handle, I guess you'd call it, yeah. is fragile. Huh? It's fragile. It'll break off in combat, you can imagine. Oh, yeah. Falling out of trucks and tanks and one thing. By the way, after the Thompson was discontinued in 1944, these were issued with every tank. Oh, okay. So, and its initial combat in uh, World War II was on D-Day. Oh, that was the first day it saw combat. That's huh? right. Some of the paratroopers dropped into Normandy with these. It was their first test. And they were plum happy with it. Uh, talk about a trial by fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this thing comes with an extendable shoulder stock instead of the wooden on a Thompson. And the whole thing was built for cheapness. It's spot welded. Uh, the sight's just a simple hole in a piece of metal back here. The front sight's just right that little nubbing. And it, where the grease gun shoots four to 400 to 450 rounds per minute, the Thompson fired 700 rounds per minute. So this shoots a lot lower. It kind of goes chug, 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 chug. Right. Huh. Now, what's the deal with the slower cyclic rate? Was that because they they were going through ammo too quickly? Is it just a result of them trying to lower the cost of the... It, it's to make them more accurate. Make them more accurate. Yeah, it's okay. more controllable. More controllable as compared mm -hmm. to the Thompson. So you said the Thompson had an effective range of about 50 yards. What would you say the effective range on this is? 50 yards at the most. So it yeah. didn't help that much in extending the range, but right. the accuracy, it and, really helped. And the cost. The Thompson, like I, I told you about the M1 Thompson, they got the price down to $44. On this, they got the price down to about $22. <laughs> Boy, wouldn't you like to pay $22 for one of these? <laughs> and I paid a lot more than that. And these only had one magazine, these, the, the stick, and I think they were 35 rounds. 35 maximum. rounds? Yeah. So when it comes to caring for one of these things, anything special to note or any unique things you got to do with these things? Well, one advantage it's got over the Thompson is that you can take the barrel off. You don't have to clean it from the muzzle. Oh. It comes apart very easily and you can clean it from the breech so you don't mess with the, the crown at the end of the muzzle here. Uh, other than that, you've got to keep it oiled. It's just a block sliding inside a tube. So it's simple, but just keep it oiled. Uh, that's pretty much it. They had to make it simple. It was going to be used by soldiers. Right, yeah. which in turn probably helps with the reliability and everything else. That's right. So when it comes to hand loading for this thing, do you have a pet load, a favorite load for this one? I do, and strangely enough, I cannot get cast bullets to feed in this. I've tried several different types, and they absolutely refuse to feed. So I just use jacketed, full, full metal jacketed, 230 grain round nose. And again, my favorite powder charge is 5.4 grains, a Winchester 231. Okay. And so. I have clocked at cyclic rate, and depending on the exact load, it shoots about 400 to 425 rounds per minute. Wow, so pretty slow. Slow. It just yeah. chugs along. That's right, yeah. They were a good gun for what they were intended for. And this continued on in use. Uh, for example, I know one Marine that carried one in Vietnam. 
Really? Mm -hmm. Really? That's he, very interesting. He, he preferred it in the jungle to the M16. Because of reliability, or yeah. there must be a reasoning there? Huh? Well, he said it punched through the leaves and brush better. Huh. Very interesting. Yes. Very interesting. So as far as like the World War II then, uh, you said they were issued in tanks later on in the war, mm -hmm. the paratroopers. What about like standard infantry squads? Did they see much use there? Or? They did eventually, yes. Eventually. And it was, again, it was the same as with the Thompson. The NCOs got them. NCOs. Yeah. That makes sense. Yes. So any final notes or anything you want to add before we go take this to the range and send some lead down range? Well, I think you'll be surprised at how slow it shoots. I'm really excited to try this one out, especially being able to contrast it with all these other full autos we have lined up. Mm -hmm. It'll be really neat. So on that note, let's go ahead and hit the range. I'll carry the ammo. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought the ammo. You've got the M3? That's right. It's unofficially known as the grease gun because that's exactly what it looks like. It was a uh, successor to the Thompson. Okay. Uh, tanks after the, these came out, every tank had one of these in the turret. Okay. So same thing, 45 auto. You, there is no safety except this door. You pop that open and it's ready to fire. This close, this uh, cocks the bolt. That's all there is to it. Okay, so I'll put the magazine in, flip that up, and it's ready. Yep. And it fires from an open bolt, so I don't have to rack it. Well, you might have to rack it. Might have to rack it? No, it's open. It's open. Open. There okay. you go. Okay. There we go. So we're out on the range and we just finished a long day of filming with all these awesome, awesome full autos. And we figured we'd do this uh, kind of all together like You're right. with all the full autos. So that way we kind of had some time behind each one of them and we could talk about them. We'll have individual videos on each of these awesome World War II firearms. So be sure to check out each one individually. But as far as a conclusion goes, for me, my personal favorite has to be this STG 44, MP 44, as this one's marked. Yes. It is a super cool gun. It's the first assault rifle ever made, definitively. And uh, it's a neat intermediate cartridge. It's pretty accurate in semi-auto. Gets away from you pretty quick in full auto, oh, though. Yeah. And then, of course, you gotta have the Thompson in there. And again, we'll have individual videos on all of these. But I had so much fun out here shooting these things. I learned so much just listening to Mike talk about them. And we didn't even skim the surface. If you really want to learn more about these classic, iconic, historical firearms, be sure to check out his book, Shooting World War II Small Arms. It's an awesome book with low data, tons of information on it. And Mike, I have to thank you for coming out here and doing this with us, opening up your home, your shooting shack. I have to give a special thanks to Ted Tompkins for being the uh, official gopher. Full, yeah, the, the gopher. gopher. The gopher. I mean, he was running back and forth, brought us lunch, brought us food. I really appreciate that, Ted. And Mike, I don't have enough good things to say about you. I really appreciate this. Shooting your ammunition, your time, your guns means a yeah. lot to me. I'll tell you what, Jeremiah. I had just as much fun sharing it with you, and I'm proud to be included in this. It means a lot to me. And as for my favorite, that's the MP40. It's one of the least practical, but I saw a lot of movies in the 50s and 60s. <laughs> and they all had those, right? That's right, yeah. For sure. As a young kid, I grew up watching combat and shows like this, so getting to shoot these firearms is really a dream come true. And we got a lot of great performance out of all of them. The Nambu really surprised me with its simplicity and its accuracy. Mm -hmm. The Lewis gun did pretty good too, but as you were saying, it's not quite zeroed. That's right. Yeah. So we got to cut it a little bit of slack. But it was a lot of fun <laughs> to shoot, great cartridges, 
the Sten, a simple mass-produced submachine gun mm -hmm. that worked. Yeah. Kind of the same thing with the grease gun. They put it in tanks, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. And so we got. I got to learn a lot about these. Well, don't forget the M2 carbine. And the M2 carbine. What an awesome, accurate little rifle. If you were in a tough spot, that'd be the one to have. Probably the most practical, you were saying. Definitely. Most practical. Most practical. Well, thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. And uh, again, a special thanks to Mike and Ted Tompkins for making this all possible. Don't forget to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or personal experience with these guns, we'd love to hear about it. Be sure to leave those thoughts in the comments below. And until the next episode, we'll see you later. Yeah.